Hello and welcome. This is going to be our worksheet help video for the unit one test review. Let's uh, get started with problem number one. We're going to try to get a whole bunch of these done uh, in rapid succession. Problem number one, C cubed is 41. So cubed, we just need to know that this means take whatever comes before it and raise it to the power of three. So C cubed is C to the power of three. And the word is is going to become an equal sign. So C cubed is 41. Quotient, that means divide. So I'm going to do T over 2. The quotient of T and 2 is, again, becomes the equal sign, 20. The sum of N and 8. Sum is an addition operation. So the sum of N and 8 is N plus 8. Uh, the difference of D and 7 is... 25, that word difference means use subtraction to combine our two numbers. Is becomes an equal sign. 25 goes to the other side. All right, time to go the other direction. So when I see number five, make sure you read the directions because I think a lot of people will look at number five and just want to solve this. That's not what we're, what we're doing. We're writing this as a verbal expression. So what we're going to say is the sum of nine and 12. For number six, we're going to say x cubed is 13. Here's one we haven't seen yet, multiplication. The word we're going to use that for, uh, the word we're going to use for that is product. So the product of n and 11 is 42. All right, and then number eight is five cubed. All right, <clears throat> nine through 14, ask us to rewrite using the correct operation and then simplify. So the quotient of 30 and five, I rewrite that as 30 over five, but now this can be simplified because 30 can be divided by five and it becomes a six. Three cubed, that means write three with the exponent of three. That's the same as three times three times three which becomes a 27 when simplified. The difference of 14 and 12, I'm gonna do 14 minus 12, and I'm gonna get a two. The product of two and 12, so two times 12 equals 24. Um, eight squared, so squared kind of like cubed, but it means an exponent of two. Eight squared is the same as eight times eight, which becomes 64. All right, uh, evaluating using PEMDAS, we'll start with 15. So when I have a big fraction line, I need to simplify the top and the bottom before doing the division. So I can add in these hidden parentheses that are around the top. 13 plus, or 17 plus three is a 20. All right, the four stays in the bottom, 20 divided by four is a five. Four squared times two, uh, I'm gonna do the exponent first. 4 squared becomes a 16. Keep the times 2. Now combine those, and this becomes a 32. 3 times parentheses, 5 plus 3. Parentheses comes before the multiplication, so I'm going to do 3 times 8. I can drop the parentheses. Now that it's down to a single number. And 3 times 8 becomes a 24. 4 times 3 over 3. Now, PEMDAS says... We should go left to right with the multiplication and division, but it's okay to actually go out of order here. I can do the three divided by three and then multiply. Um, you don't have to go left to right. You can go uh, in whatever order you want as long as um, we do it in the right way. So uh, I can do the three divided by three. I can turn that into a one, and this is now four times one is a four. All right, uh, let's look at maybe 21. Got to do the parentheses first, but I can also combine the six plus four because it has nothing to do with these parentheses. So it'll be six plus four, 10, minus one plus two is a three. So 10 minus three becomes a seven. One squared times five minus one, one squared is a one. The five minus one, we can do that next because that has nothing to do with this exponent. 
Well, really, it's we can do the exponent because it has nothing to do with the parentheses, which we have to do first. This is 1 times 4. 4. Okay. Um, maybe 24. Got to simplify the bottom of this fraction before I can go forward with the division. And I can do this addition as well because it has nothing to do with this division. So I can turn that into an 8. That's fine. Now this becomes um, 5 plus 8. And that becomes a 13. Okay. Uh, let's do 25. So I can do the 9 plus 9 on the top. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. And then I got to do the 5 minus 2 because that's the most inside parentheses there. That's going to become a 3. Now I've got 18 over 3 becomes a 6. Uh, let's say 26. I have to do the multiplication on the top first. I've got 1 plus 8 minus 3 all over 6 equals, that's going to be, let's just do this in our head. 1 plus 8 is 9. Minus 3 is a 6. So 6 over 6 equals 1. All right, evaluating using the values given. This is also called substituting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug in these numbers. So here's my expression, 4p minus m, but I'm gonna replace the m with a one, and I'm gonna replace the p with a five. So this is now gonna become four times five minus one. All right, four times five is a 20 minus one, that's gonna become a 19. All right, let's try 29. So m is four, n is four, I've got four plus four over four. You have to do the division first here. This becomes four plus one, which becomes a five. All right, these ones we can simplify down to a single number. Okay, uh, let's look at 30. Um, we're gonna plug in a five for h and a five for j. 6 times 5 minus 5 becomes 30 minus 5, 25. Let's look at 31. This is going to become 2 squared minus 2 minus 1. 4 minus 2 minus 1 is a 1, which is equal to a 3. And 32. 5 plus xy means x times y, so I'm going to do 3 times 5 plus x is a 3, 5 plus 15 plus 3 equals 23. All right, simplify each expression by distributing or combining like terms. Uh, problem 33, these are like terms because they got the same variable, so I can just combine their coefficients. 6 minus 6 is 0, so I will write 0. And it's not 0 and 0 is just 0. All right, m minus 10m, this is going to become a negative 9m. Here, this here becomes a 9n. These are also like terms. This becomes a 16m because those are like terms. But now with 37, we have constants and terms with a variable. So the v and the 2v can come together to become a 3v. The 3 and the 1 can come together to become a 4. But then we have to stop because these are not like terms. So we just box our answer. We move on. 38 is just 1. All right, and with 39, we have to start using distribution. If I have a number in front of a set of parentheses, I need to multiply that number to every term inside the parentheses. So I need to do the 7 times the negative 10x becomes a negative 70x. The 7 times the negative 8 becomes a negative 56. All right, negative 4 times 7 minus x. Going to distribute in that negative 4. Negative 4 times 7 is a negative 28. Negative 4 times a negative x becomes a positive 4x. And then I want to rearrange this so that the constant is at the end. 4x minus 28. All right, with 42, we can distribute just a negative. This is going to become a negative 1 minus 7p. Then rearrange that to be negative 7p minus 1 so that the constant is at the end. All right, um, looking here, maybe 47 would be a good next one. 
I'm going to distribute in the negative 7. The negative is going to come with when I do this distribution. And I'm going to get negative 10 minus 7 plus 35R. Negative times a negative becomes a positive. Let's rearrange this by bringing the 35R to the front. And then the negative 10 and the negative 7 are going to become a negative 17 and go to the end. Because we always put the constants at the end. Uh, okay, problem number 48. I'm going to distribute in this negative 3. I get positive 3 minus 27x plus 6x. Combine these, we get negative 21x plus 3. All right, and let's do some area problems. So find the area of each. Area of a rectangle is just length times width. So area equals length times width. I'm going to plug in the values that I have here, 3.5 times 8.2. It's supposed to be a W. And for this, I'm going to need my calculator. Definitely make sure you've got a calculator ready to go for the test. Um, knowing how to use your calculator is important. Let's do, okay, 3.5 times 8.2. I get 28.7. And now it needs a unit. The original unit was yards, but this is an area, so it becomes square yards. Okay, with these parallelograms, we have to not think in terms of length times width, but in terms of base times height. The base and the height now need to meet at 90 degrees. So I'm going to multiply the two numbers we see here, the 8 and the 9. 8 times 9 equals 72. Look at the unit, inches squared. Same thing here, just multiply those two numbers. Okay, now I want to go over a few more of these. Let's just pick maybe two and I'll do, I'll find the missing lengths, then I'll find area and perimeter. So how about seven and eight? Okay, so I'm missing X over here. In order to find that, I'm going to need to add in some dotted lines to split up this composite shape into rectangles. Now let's see where I can carry over numbers. I can carry this five over here, and that shows me that this piece right here has to be a six, so that five plus six still adds up to be 11. Then this six can come all the way over here and all the way over here to fill in for X. All right, now for Y, I can drop this 11 down here. That shows me that this has to be a seven, so that 11 plus seven still adds up to be 18. And then the seven can move up to the top and fill in for Y. Now let's find the perimeter. In order to find the perimeter, I make one big bold dot that I'm going to like start from and end at. Perimeter. Now I'm going to add up as I go around. So 6 plus 11 plus 5 plus 7 plus I'll do the outside measurement here of 11 plus I'll do the outside measurement here of 18. That way I get the length of every side coming all the way back to my original dot. And what do I get? I get uh, 17 plus 12 plus 29. Uh, 17 plus 12, that's going to become a 29 plus 29. And that is going to become a 58. And we don't know the units, so we'll just say units. All right, now for area, I'm just going to find the area of each of these individually by doing length times width. So this here has become, become a 66. This one's a 35. This one's a 42. Add them all up, we get 66 plus 42 plus 35. These two become 108 plus 35. And then we get 143 units squared. All right, one more of these. Let's do problem number eight. Uh, I'm going to add in my dotted lines. Uh, let's see, carry down the seven and the six. Together they make a 13 for x. And if I carry over the seven, this has to be a 10, meaning that y also has to be a 10. 
All right, let's find the perimeter. I'll make my dot. We get 17 plus 7 plus 10 plus 6 plus 7 plus 13 to go all the way around the shape. 24 plus 16 plus 20. Three, uh, 40 plus 20 equals 60 units. Now let's find the area. Multiply each of these individually. We get a 70, a 49, and a 42. So for the area, we'll do 70 plus 49 plus 42. We'll add these two together first, so they're the smaller numbers. And that would give me a 91 plus 70. It's me a 161 units squared. All right, so hopefully that's been helpful. And good luck studying for this test. Use the extra stuff calendar. And have a good rest of your day.